when we want to assess the evolution process of the student during their apprenticeship, you should remember that this is something where both you as a mentor and a learner supervisor in the education center need to be involved. We will now address the different basic steps that need to be considered in this collaborative process. The basis of the evaluation of the activities is formed by the evaluation sheet that you as a mentor will have used throughout your apprenticeship. You should make sure that the sheet is officially signed by you and signed off in the usual way by your company. Once this is done, you should share this evaluation sheet with the apprentice's supervisor. Together with the apprentice's school supervisor, you review the work and learning the apprentice has done while they were at your company. Normally, this review and evaluation is based on a notebook that is being filled in by the apprentice throughout their work with you. It is important to make the link between the work the apprentice has done and what they have actually learned from it. In other words, together with the apprentice's supervisor, you should assess what are the competencies the apprentice has acquired throughout their apprenticeship. This is in particular related to new knowledge and skills the apprentice has obtained during their work with you, as well as more personal competencies and attitudes which are related to working in a professional environment. Be aware that work in a professional environment is normally completely new for a learner and perhaps more challenging than the more specific technical skills related to the profession they are studying for. Based on all this information, you should come to a conclusion on the final mark you will give the apprentice for the entire apprenticeship. Here you will have to follow the guidelines of the education center in terms of how the grading should be done. This can vary between countries and between education centers. It can, for example, have the form of a percentage between one and 100, a mark between 1 and 10, or a simple pass or fail statement. Whatever the system you are expected to follow, it is always important to remember that the final mark should be a true reflection of the learning outcomes the apprentice has gained. Of course, this is easier said than done. Evaluating someone's learning and giving a mark for it is always subjective. But to make this process as fair and reliable as possible, there are a few things you can take into account during the evaluation process. Firstly, it is always advisable to keep a written record of your observations and assessment. For example, by using an observation grid with clear criteria. It would also be useful to not have just one overall assessment of the apprentice at the end of the apprenticeship, but instead to build in a number of evaluation moments. Also make sure that the evaluation instruments you use cover all the learning outcomes. For this, it can actually help to use a combination of different evaluation methods.